the Columbia Gorge Community College is formerly known as the Eastern Oregon State Tuberculosis Hospital, and it sits high on a hill above the city of the Dalles, Oregon, overlooking the Columbia River. Of all the buildings in this city, this one is reported to be the most haunted. Welcome to Investigating the Northwest. This channel is dedicated to exploring the mysterious, haunted, beautiful, and historical of the Pacific Northwest. Currently, we're exploring the haunted locations in the Dalles, Oregon, a city tucked in by the Columbia River and steeped in early Oregon history. Tuberculosis was an immense medical issue in America starting around 1895, and it was also known as consumption. According to an article by Virginia Tech, it was the greatest single cause of death in the United States between 1870 and 1920. Tuberculosis was contagious and affected a great number of the population. Hospitals could not handle the immense numbers of patients and provide the treatment they needed without spreading the disease to other patients. This is when the need for tuberculosis treatment centers was necessary. So three tuberculosis centers were created to treat and house these patients in the state of Oregon. And the treatment was generally rest, good diet, and fresh air. The first building of the Eastern Oregon State Tuberculosis Hospital was built in 1929. According to the History of Wasco County, Oregon by William H. McNeil, quote, the main hospital building is a concrete structure consisting of a basement and three floors completed in 1929. The basement had quarters for employees, storage, refrigeration plant. The main floor has the offices, employees, quarters, main kitchen, and dining rooms. The upper two floors are for the patients, with a second floor including the laboratory, dental and x-ray equipment, examination rooms, surgery. On the third floor is the auditorium for entertainment and church services, movies." Unquote. Over the years, the site expanded to a campus encompassing 12 buildings, including a nurse's quarters, an additional hospital annex for more patients, physicians' housing, laundry, and more. But only the original building remains today. In 1959, after the effective treatment of the tuberculosis cure eliminated the need for dedicated hospitals, this campus was converted to a sanatorium for special needs patients that could not live on their own. It was renamed the Mid-Columbia Home, and many residents were Down syndrome patients. This was not an asylum for the criminally insane, just a, an assisted living center for the patients who resided there. Over the next few decades, the name changed to the Columbia Park Home and the Columbia Park Hospital and Training Center. In the 1980s, the property was sold to the Judson Baptist College, and then in 1993, it was sold again and became the Columbia Gorge Community College. The last remaining building from the old TB Hospital campus used to be called Heath Hall. Now it's known simply as Building 2. However, I'll continue to call it Heath Hall. The bookstore in the back of Heath Hall is said to be haunted. There's an uneasy presence there. Students and employees have heard many unexplained crashes and noises in the bookstore. The Department of Environmental Quality Office, or just the DEQ office for short, is also located in Heath Hall. DEQ employees have heard loud hacking coughs in empty areas. Reportedly, though, the elevator is the place to go if you really want to have a ghostly experience. One student reported, quote, quote, The elevator took me to the basement there when I pushed the button for the third floor. Another classmate said the same thing happened to her a few days before, end quote. As I scoured websites about haunted experiences and one of the Dow's Facebook pages, I've seen many, many references to the elevator taking people to the basement, even though they press the button for a different floor. Another student said, quote, I was taking night classes at CGCC and ended up in that basement. I was trying to find a room. The elevator door wouldn't close or work. I got out and 
I swear I saw someone walking down the end of the hallway. I got back in the elevator and heard like whispers and keys jingled and I looked at the elevator, nothing. I started to freak out and ran out the door, end quote. I did see many people speculating there had been a crematorium on the campus and that the hauntings could be from the deceased patients that were cremated on site. If you've watched my videos before, you know I love to dig in to the origin stories of these ghostly experiences. Could Heath Hall be haunted by tuberculosis patients? Well, that origin story is fact. This absolutely was a tuberculosis hospital, no doubt about that. And although I could not find the death rate statistics specifically for this hospital, many, many TB patients did die at this hospital. I'm not surprised that the sounds of the harsh, rasping, bloody coughs of the patients echoes through the buildings to this day. Was the basement the location of the hospital morgue? This origin story is very possible. I would say fact. In the History of Wasco County, Oregon book, it does say that there was a refrigeration plant and storage in the basement of Heath Hall. Since there was only one building for this hospital at the very beginning, and many patients did die there at a high frequency, they had to be stored somewhere. That is my likely guess for the location of the morgue in the early days of this hospital. And finally, was there a crematorium on the campus? Well, this origin story is fiction. There is no evidence there was ever a crematorium on the premise. Former employees said they never saw any possible location for one. Also, it is well known that the Oregon State Tuberculosis Hospital in Salem, Oregon had a crematorium on site, and that over 3,000 sets of human remains are still waiting to be claimed. If Eastern Oregon State TB Hospital had one, it would likely be stated in many of the records about the hospital. So who else could possibly be haunting the community college? When I was doing some research into these origin stories, I ran across a few other incidents that might be contributing to the ghostly phenomenon here at the community college. And here are a couple extra incidents that I read about. On July 7th, 1963, Cora Engels, then 63, went missing from the hospital. And at that time, it was the Columbia Park home. Unfortunately, her body was found soon after. It was reported that she had died very soon after being reported missing. However, no further information had been released about her case. Did she encounter foul play or harm herself? We'll never know. There's no other information and I could not locate her gravesite either. Then on October 12th, 1972, 18 year old Guy McKinn accidentally shot himself in the employee's dormitory of the Columbia Park Hospital and Training Center. He and his friends had been handling the gun when it accidentally discharged. Then finally, on May 26, 1975, Kenny Hawthorne, an epileptic patient at the Columbia Park Hospital, he went missing as he was looking for firewood with the other employees around the property, and he has never been seen since. Could one of these persons who died tragically or early, could they still be wandering the property or the building? If you'd like to visit the Columbia Gorge Community College, the bookstore in Heath Hall is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the school year, and Monday through Thursday, same hours during the summer. If you do visit, please be respectful to the administration staff and the students that are there in Heath Hall because they are studying and working and buying books. But definitely check out that bookstore and the elevator if you visit. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn about the haunted Columbia Gorge Community College and its fascinating history. 
Don't forget, if you're interested in learning about the mysteries of the Pacific Northwest, of exploring fascinating locations and discovering local legends, please do subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to receive an email whenever a new video is released. Thank you.